Good evening, sir. Please forgive me for disturbing you. I'm a doctor. I never judge a man by his title, but by his attitude. And you are not disturbing me at all. I am Calhoun Russell, and I welcome you. Well, I must admit, it's good to receive a warm welcome for once. I'm Doctor... I'm Jonathan Reed. Welcome, Dr. Reed. Welcome to my humble shop. You are delightful. What can you tell me about this place? I recently found the best steak and kidney pie in the city. I'd be glad to share the address if you want. No, I will tell you, I am... I eat a lot of British food. I am full of British blood. I do not eat steak and kidney pie, honey. <laughs> Finding a good restaurant? Is that really all that interests you? Oh, I have many passions, but nothing brings me ecstasy like subtle and exquisite flavors from my teeth to my belly. Alright, now I'm beginning to think you should be on a Devour commercial. You know, the one where they spank their lunch. I must confess, I have quite specific tastes when it comes to nutrition. Really? Well, I'm always happy to try new exotic meals. If you ever find an intriguing table, please, share the address. How is the situation in this part of town? Life is good and peaceful. We're lucky to live in such an era of progress and wonders. Are you not concerned about the epidemic? Oh, I'm sure the authorities would take the appropriate measure if the danger were that high. Are you that blind? You cannot expect the newspapers to expose the truth while the war is still raging. I can assure you that the situation here is desperate. Well, that's news then. But I can't believe that things are that bad. Are you sure you're not exaggerating a bit? For the thrill of it? Yeah, if you leave this area, you're gonna die, buddy. Is it not a little too late to be trading? On the contrary, it is the perfect hour. Believe me, my friend, it is always at night that you meet the most fascinating characters. But what about the epidemic? The bombs and raids? And all the random violence? Please, sir, this is London, England. We will prevail. And if a bomb must fall on my shop, then I'll be there to hear it falling. Sounds like a whistle from my understanding. So you prefer to work at night? Oh, I also enjoy a sunny day like everybody else. But the night always has a certain je ne sais quoi of its own. I'd have to agree. I like the nightlife myself. Do you have any family nearby? Not since my parents died. I'm London's lone gourmet. Really? But you seem to be such a pleasant and sociable fellow. I'm afraid the real hedonist has to be sometimes. I discovered ecstasy as a solitary pleasure, but it does not mean it can't ever be shared. London's Lone Gourmet. What a strange title. I used that name in my early years when I was a food critic, and I kept it. I may have a look at your goods, Mr. Russell. I could use something. Tiny good handle parts. These good handle parts? Yes, excellent. Might be able to upgrade my equipment. Can I go into your shop and steal stuff? Alright, the situation here is stable. I must remember to not accidentally that kill so the, uh, what's it called? I understand exactly the what pillar of the community. The other night. Sir. Good evening, sir. May I have your attention, please? Come on, Johnny. Don't you recognize your oldest friend? Clarence. Clarence Crossley. How are you? 
my god! So you survived the war too? So sorry I didn't recognize you at first. I almost didn't recognize you either. War does that to men, I heard. In my case, it was true, for I witnessed the horror that lies underneath. When did you escape the war and return to London? You know what's funny? I almost never think about the war. Not anymore. I'm involved in another kind of battle now. Oh, God. You're part of Prewin, aren't you? I know what you mean. I haven't had much time to think about the war either since my return. Of course. The epidemic, I bet you've been busy as well. Forgive me, Johnny. I, I didn't want to sound selfish. That didn't sound selfish to me. But maybe I'm just nice. What is this new battle? Well, I saw terrible things during the war. Horrors I thought I'd forget. They're here too. They're everywhere. Vampires. Of course. So, I'm gonna have to kill my friend? How is your wife, Venus? We've spent so much time away from each other. And so many things have happened. But you're alive. You returned in one piece and you have a family. How many soldiers can say the same? Believe me, it's not quite that simple. Unlike you, I'm not the man I used to be. Is everything all right at home? Surely Venus was relieved to see you return from France in one piece. Have you forgot what people are like in this part of town, Johnny? Venus fears for our family reputation. Now her husband has become the village idiot. How have you become the village idiot? I mean, aside from your suit, which could use a bit of a clean. You need some rest, Clarence. You should try to sleep. Somebody up there as well. Women. women of all Hello. countries unite. Good evening, miss. Oh my god, no. Please, Mr. Vampire, don't kill me. Please, no. I'm too young to die. I still have so much to offer this world. Wait, no. Why do you think I would What? Don't worry, Dr. Reed. I know you wouldn't harm me. Mother told me you were in this part of town and might drop by. Your mother? My name is Charlotte, sir. Charlotte Ashbury. My mother taught me long ago how to recognize the signs that betray a vampire. I understand she also taught you how to tease and gently mock innocent young Ekons. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Charlotte. Holy crap! <laughs> That one took me by surprise. Tell me about your adoption. What do you want to know? Who are your real parents? Elizabeth Ashbury is my real mother. She raised me and has taken care of me all my life. I have no idea who my progenitors are or were. Do you live with her? I still spend a lot of time in my mother's mansion. But I have my own house now. I have a life to live, you see. One day, I'll have my death to face. Oh, I see. I thought that maybe Lady Ashbury created a vampire. How did you meet Lady Ashbury? First, I was an orphan in the institution for girls she manages in the West End. When I was ten, she adopted me. And I have lived with her ever since. Did you know she was a vampire when she picked you? The correct word is Ekon, Doctor. And no, I had no idea why my mother only showed up at night. She told me everything when I turned 16. Though I suspected the truth for a long time before that. What do you think about this part of town? 
I was raised here, and I suppose it feels like home. You grew up in this part of town too, did you not? Yes, I was born a few streets away. A small world, is it not? Did you ever imagine that my mother was your neighbor all that time? That you could have met her in a dark alley at night? You won't trick me twice, young lady. We both know Lady Ashbury never hunts or attacks prey at random. Come on, Doctor. Don't tell me you never thought about that possibility. Her fangs on your neck. Oh, are you blushing, Dr. Reed? She's just like her mother. This is great. Is there something that's bothering you? Too much selfishness and individualism for my taste. Even when there was no epidemic. Even if that's partly true, may I remind you that many charitable institutions are financed by the selfish and filthy rich. I suppose you're right. But society must reform and renew itself or we are all done for. What are you doing out here? You mean, what do I do outside at night, since I am a woman? Let me ask you a question, sir. Would you ask the same question of a man? Actually, yes. I ask the same question to everyone who dares to go outside at night, considering the risks. Well, if you must know, I campaign for the right to vote for all women. Why should I wait to the age of 30 years when men can vote at 21? Really? I didn't know any of that. Are you a suffragette, then? Oh, you really are, Elizabeth's girl. Without a doubt. All adult women have the right to vote in the US, in New Zealand, and in Australia. But women here can't vote unless they are property owners. No need to convince me, Miss Charlotte. I have shared your opinion for a long time, even before I met Emmeline Pankhurst. Really? Oh, now I see why my mother appreciates you so much. Too bad there aren't more men like you in the vicinity. How are the locals reacting to your claims? People here can't wait for a wall to be built to isolate the West End from the rest of town. That's how progressive they are. If this happens, Emily and I will blow it up. Explosives are very dangerous, young lady. And who is this Emily? She is my best friend, and a suffragette too. She was supposed to campaign with me tonight, but hasn't turned up. Have you any reason to be worried about her? Recently, Emily started to believe in... Well, she got interested in vampires. I'm afraid she might be in trouble. Let me guess. You spoke to her about us, didn't you? Despite your mother's warning. I think I should try to find your friend. Oh, that would be top-notch. I can tell you where she might have gone. You have my thanks, Dr. Reed. And please, don't tell my mother. What exactly has your mother told you about me? Your name and profession, obviously. And the mystery about your maker. I'm sorry to hear about what happened to your sister, sir. Mother says it was not your fault. Does it not scare you to know what I am? what your mother is. Why should it? My mother is the most compassionate woman. Must I be wary of her, Dr. Reed? Or you? Of course not. You have nothing to fear from me or your mother. Good to know. And don't worry, my mother told me everything I need to know about vampire tricks, their nature as well as features. Your mother is not like any other vampire I've met. I believe she thinks the same about you, Dr. Reed. Do you know why Lady Asprey chose you to become her daughter? No, I don't. Each time I ask her that question, she smiles and says it's precisely because I dare to ask such questions. Do you ever regret that she chose you? Of course not. Though I often wonder if she adopted others before me. If so, where are they buried? How was it for them to pass through life with a never-aging mother? Oh god. I use face creams to never age. Goodbye, Charlotte. Give my best regards to your mother when you see her. She's been quite busy these last few nights. 
I suspect you may see her before me. A never aging mother. God, I would have to call her a bitch for, you know, aging less than me. Can I get up here and talk to this woman? Oh my god, it's my mother. Okay, that's my mother up there. Sounds like there should be someone else in here as well. right there. Hi. Good evening, Avery. Mr. Jonathan? I can't believe my own eyes. Oh, it's a miracle. We all thought you were... Oh, sir, your poor sister. What a tragedy. I know, Avery. I know about my sister's murder. Miss Reed expected you to return to assist with the funeral, right up until the last minute. Where have you been, Mr. Jonathan? We needed you here. Jeez. Just got back from war, coming a break. How is my mother? Not well, I'm afraid, sir. Miss Reed is very fragile since the police brought her back home. The police? What happened? Miss Reed was found walking in the streets. She kept saying she had spoken with her son and daughter. She's resting now. Has she received appropriate medical care? I'm taking care of Miss Reed myself. Hospitals are so overwhelmed by the epidemic that they can only accept patients infected by influenza. I wouldn't want to bring her there anyway. Perhaps we could arrange a short trip. Somewhere sunny, like France. She has always been very fond of France. I think leaving London could do her good. I'm afraid Miss Reed is too frail for the moment. Recently, she started going out at night without remembering it. I have to watch her carefully. What is the situation in this part of town? For a time, the West End seems spared by the epidemic. But the situation is getting much worse. Have you no relatives anywhere? I'll understand if you want to take a few days to see family. Your father managed to guarantee my earnings as long as I take care of this house, sir. My sisters are dead, and I've never met my nephews. I'll stay, sir. I'm sorry I could not be here for Mary's funeral. Your mother was strong, sir, but your support would have been appreciated. Apart from the priest and I, no one else attended your sister's funeral. To be present at the funeral with you both was my dearest wish, Avery. But I'm sorry I simply could not attend. I would not dare to question your absence, Mr. Jonathan. All I can say is that we missed you a great deal during these difficult days. Well, I'm here now. Tell me the truth, Avery. Do you feel forced to stay here? Would you leave this house without the arrangement made by my father? No, sir. I have nowhere else to go. And I promised your father I'd take care of his family as long as I live. This house is dead, Avery. There is a curse on this family. You really should consider leaving. If only you could have been here sooner or more often. Maybe this house would not be that empty. But you're here now, sir. So my task is not over. You have served this family extremely well, Avery. Your support during these terrible times is much appreciated. Then I will stay. 
All I ask is that you take care of my own funeral if I die before the end of the epidemic. No mass grave, please, sir. Do you really think I don't take enough care of my mother, Avery? Yes, I do, Mr. Jonathan. You clearly have something more to say. Speak your mind, Avery. I know you work hard to help the sick, but what will you do once the epidemic is over? I really don't know. I have always enjoyed seeing New Horizons. Once the epidemic is over, it would be nice to leave London for a while. I understand, Mr. Jonathan. But you have to realize that your mother needs you. Your next departure could break her heart. I'm surprised he hasn't been beaten. <laughs> Goodbye, Avery. Please watch over my mother until I return. Of course, Mr. Jonathan. But please return as soon as possible. I didn't think servants were supposed to speak their mind, so... I, I don't even know. <laughs> But he wasn't very he wasn't very kind and that is not his place. Now scrub my floor. <laughs> Did I just take a fork out of the cabinet? Is that what I saw? Can't go in there. Can I see my old bed my old bedroom? This has got to be a good hideout for me, right? Damn, look at these parquet floors. Yes. A lot of keys. Okay, I can get into a door now that I wasn't able to before. That's where I came in. Can I upgrade my weapons now? This one's more important. Yes. Yes, increase that blood absorption. Need six good handle parts and eight lead plates. Dear me. Now I need one more of those. Okay, but I'm on the right track at least. Who's screaming? Who needs help? <laughs> what are these ill-formed blinker skulls? That's weird. Oh, I can eavesdrop before I've even met them. Your father and I have spoken about your fiancé, Mary. We believe he'll be an honorable husband for you. We'll set a date for the marriage, then. That way, I'm sure one of my children will give me grandchildren. I understand your thirst for knowledge, Jonathan, and your father and I are proud of it. But you are not that young anymore, my son. When will I meet your soulmate? You can ascribe my romantic tendencies to my French origins if you want, Aubrey. 
but I'll never cease to believe in a match made in heaven, my beloved. I really wish you could meet her mother. You would love her. I would just like to mention, it is inborn in every mother to have the ability to just say, you're not getting any younger. Insert name here. <laughs> you're not getting any younger, Jonathan. And it's never fathers, it's always mothers, and it's inborn. It's unbelievable. Why not? Mother, good evening. Jonathan, is it you? Where have you been, my prodigal son? I'm right here, Mother. I'm finally home. Yes, for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and now found. But where is your sister? Where is Mary? Mary? She... She is gone, Mother. I know she's gone. The question is, when will she return as you have? I miss my grandson so much. It's been days since their last visit. Yeah, they're both dead. Sorry. <laughs> Why do you say Mary is visiting you, Mother? You know that's impossible. Why should it be? Are you not standing in front of me right now? Why should it be any different with your sister? Well, because I killed her twice. But Mary really is dead, Mother. Yes. And are you not dead too? Isn't your father dead? And my grandson and my son-in-law, you're all gone. But you all still visit me from time to time. Oh, dear. <laughs> but I'm not dead mother I'm really here talking to you trying not to cry oh it breaks my heart to have to tell you this but of course you're dead my darling boy just look at you as pale as my Mary do you really see Mary and father do you also see me as one of the dead? Yes. For many years, it was just a game. Since your father left us without a word, I took to the habit of speaking to him. Yes, I remember. I sometimes spied on you and listened to you talking with father in the garden. It made me so angry then. But it was just a game, wasn't it? Yes, it was. But since then, my poor dead Mary visited me in my room. She led me to her grave, and there you were. I now know the dead can haunt us. I thought she made her forget. I'm so sorry. You did not deserve to endure this. Mary should never have done this to you. That's true, my son. But you know what the worst part is? I liked it when Mary spoke in my head. Now she is silent, and it makes me so sad. Should I leave you alone? Just ask, and I swear you'll never hear from me again. Oh no, Johnny. You're always welcome in this house. And one day, when I finally die, we'll all be together again, just as Mary promised us. I'll accept me, because I'm only kind of, sort of, dead. Is there something I didn't ask? Guess not. Have you returned to Whitechapel Cemetery since Mary's funeral? I never want to go back to that awful place. Wait. I think I went back once. And you were there, too. And Mary? No, that can't be true. It was just a bad dream, Mother. A nightmare, yes. 
Mary was so angry. I walked back home alone. If that kind policeman had not called Avery from the station, I don't know what would have happened. Mother, do you know what's been going on in this area? Not really. I don't go out much due to the epidemic, and when I do, I tend to get lost. What do you mean, you get lost? I hope you don't go outside alone. Of course not. When I go out, your father always comes with me, but he leaves me there sometimes, and I have trouble finding the way back. <laughs> I find dead people leave quite a lot. Tell me, Mother, how are you? All alone in this big house, with only Avery to take care of you. I'm sad most of the time. Sad that you have left me here alone. Sad that you don't tell me when you come or go. I'm so sorry, Mother. It wasn't supposed to be like this. I was coming home. I was home. London, the Thames. And then it happened. What happened, Johnny? Uh, I lost my way, I guess. I lost my way. Somewhere between the boat and the house, my life changed completely. You should have told me, Johnny. I would have understood. You always were a secretive little boy. Well, things have not changed. Are you working on a new painting? Not recently. I have trouble focusing on my subject and my mind quickly drifts. It's the same thing when I try to write poetry. I recently met a talented painter with an excellent technique. I wish you two could meet. I'm sure you'd like her. I'd be glad to meet her. What is her name? Is she famous? Is she dead too? She's not famous and her name is of no importance. And yes, she is also dead. The important thing is, I hope you two get along. If she ever fancies meeting your mother, I'd be glad to welcome her into my home. She did too. That's not the first question people usually ask. Or the twelfth. <laughs> Do you need anything, mother? Can I help you? I just want you to stay with me, Jonathan. Your room is ready. I asked Avery to make your bed. I'll stay as long as I can, I promise. Do you need anything else? Just one thing. Stop staring at me like that. As much as I love you, it breaks my heart to look at those empty and dead eyes. Do you think Avery is right? Do you think I should take better care of you? I don't blame you, but you abandoned me, son. A mother should not survive her children. It's unbearable to know you're not here anymore. But I am here. <laughs> I know I have failed you since I returned. I even watched you bury Mary from a distance. From now on, I will protect you. You have my word. You don't have to apologize to me, Johnny. Do you think I did not notice how much you have changed? Have I changed that much, Mother? Am I still your son? You are still, and you'll always be. Despite your pale skin, your bloody eyes, and that echoing sadness in your voice. Goodbye, Mother. Try to rest now. Goodbye, son. Please come back soon. Mary? Oh, my dear daughter. How are you tonight? How is your sweet boy? Can I take that, that water jug? I'm assuming it's crystal and that's why it's somewhat see-through. I remember Sunday walks in the park. Anything else? Wow, there's a lot of crystal. What am 
my grandmother died, she had a lot of Waterford crystal. Everyone thought it was worth, like, a, a, an absolute ton of money. And then when we actually looked into it, it's worth absolutely nothing. Because nobody, nobody else liked Waterford, so it was like, okay, we'll sell it. Yeah, it's not really worth our time. Please, sir. Whether you need to buy something or not, I'm happy to help. 